Multiple victims are being treated after a woman allegedly assaulted four people on the TTC's Line 1 this morning. The call came in from St. Clair Station around 9.30 this morning. Police say an off-duty police officer was able to detain the suspect until on-duty officers arrived. A statement from the TTC reads in part, We have recently added more special constable patrols on the subways and we are deploying even more uniformed staff around the system. But we also know that there are bigger societal and systemic issues at play when it comes to the root causes of these incidents and we look forward to a broader discussion about what can be done to reduce all crime. And joining us live right now is former homicide detective from Toronto Police and CTV crime specialist Mark Mendelson. Mark, good to chat with you this afternoon, although uh, absolutely tragic circumstances in each of these cases. Let's start with our lead story this, uh, this afternoon, that being that, that situation, that unbelievable situation on multiple floors, multiple people gunned down in their what it sounds like their own condominium building. Could you talk a bit about, A, your reaction to this, and then B, the difficulty in investigating such a large scene? Well, good afternoon, guys. Yeah, it's it's absolutely horrific. There's no no other word to describe it. And and what we've got going on now are se essentially two separate investigations. The SIU have invoked their mandate, so their role now will be to uh, conduct an investigation to determine whether the uh, the police interaction, which led to the death of this man, um, w was warranted. In other words, the use of deadly force. And they're going to have to make that determination. We should find out in the next couple of hours whether the SIU have. De uh, designated uh, how many officers are subject officers, how many are witness officers, and there'll be interviews that'll take place with respect to that. The second prong, and I think the one that we all want answers to as quickly as possible for obvious reasons, is just what happened. Mm -hmm. And that's gonna fall on the on the lap now of, of York Regional's homicide squad. So they're dealing with at least six different scenes, um, interviews, um, they're gonna be doing a, a complete background of this individual, there's lots of social media, Mm -hmm. uh, postings out there, including from this gentleman, which is going to suggest that there are problems uh, or ongoing problems with uh, the, the condo board. He goes on and talks about problems with the developer and with the court system and corruption within the court system. There's all kinds of information that he has posted um, shortly before he went on this rampage. Um, then we want to also deal with all the, all the post-mortem examinations to ensure that the, each of these individuals was shot by the same gun. Is there another gun out there that they're not aware of? And another question a lot of people are going to be asking are, where did he get this gun from? We understand mm -hmm. now from the SIU, it's a semi-automatic pistol. So there's going to be investigations as to whether he was in lawful possession of this, of this weapon. Where's that weapon sourced from? Uh, lots of things to go through, um, a lot of moving parts. Uh, it's going to take a number of hours before things start to settle down. They're still in, in the process of interviewing next of kin for all these homicide victims. Uh, you know, So their names will not be released until such time as they've been notified. Uh, lots of people in the building to interview. And I would suggest what's also important is, was there anything out there from a social media perspective or anything in the court system that he was involved in that may have been a flag that this was a possibility mm -hmm. and it, you know mm -hmm. uh, you know d did he say any anything else was he posting other things about committing these types of crimes uh, like a massacre of this kind so they're going to have to go through all of that they'll go through all of the court documentation that he's been involved in with the developers with the condo board that's going to take some time as mm -hmm. well yeah i think a lot of people will be trying to watch for mark or whether or not these uh, shootings were targeted or Random And speaking of random, let's turn our attention now to these attacks on the TDC that we've been seeing. A woman stabbed to death just last week. Another four people attacked today by a female suspect. These attacks seem random, but how worried should people be? And what can we do to protect, protect ourselves? Well, I think everybody, when they're traveling, it, and it doesn't matter whether you're on the TTC or whether you're just walking on the street, I think you need to be alive to your surroundings and who is around you, and if you feel that you're being followed or harassed, things of that nature, what you should be doing about that. Number one, making a lot of noise. Number two, looking for help from somebody in the public who's with you and calling 911. What we're seeing with the TTC now almost appears to have manifested itself since the pandemic. Now that we're in the post-pandemic, we have a lot of people who are riding uh, TTC uh, equipment all day long because they may be homeless, they may be suffering from mental health issues, it, or maybe both. The TTC for them is a quiet, safe, and warm uh, situation mm -hmm. to find themselves in. 
And we know that the TDC have increased their uh, visible patrols from their enforcement officers. Toronto police are working on that as well to create sort of a, a, a visible deterrent, if you will, that may stop some of these crimes. But we've had shootings, we've had stabbings, we've had a young woman set on fire mm -hmm. and killed on a bus. Um, so, you know, we've had, a, we've had somebody thrown onto the tracks as well. Realistically, you can't put a uniform officer in every subway car mm -hmm. on an every in, in every bus, um, and it certainly doesn't fall on the on the laps of the operators and the drivers to be doing this either. So this is an enforcement situation. We know the Toronto Police are working with the TTC and trying trying to to sort of stem the tide right now. But this is a much bigger problem in that we have to find places for these people who are in need and who are in crisis. And, 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 and who need assistance to be able to get that assistance quickly and, and, and maybe alleviate the need for them to be riding on the TTC. And if they're having mental health issues or mental health crises, then somewhere for them to be, to be, to be taken to where, where these problems can be addressed. So it's a much larger problem. We're just, we're, we're just seeing such a huge, uh, you know, a huge increase in, in what's been taking place mm -hmm. over the last few months. And it's not going to be a quick fix. But yeah. everybody needs to be alive to their surroundings. Indeed, they do. That's uh, such good advice. That is CTV crime analyst uh, Mark Mendelson joining us. Good to chat with you, Mark. Thanks for the time this afternoon. Thank you. Have a good afternoon, guys.